it, it's really cold now. I, I, I need to find some sh 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 shelter. So this is the last video. I'm quite sad because I'm going to miss you people. Now this video really has 10 multiple choice questions. So see if you can answer the questions from the material you've been provided in the last 14 videos. And there is a downloadable source under this video where you can download the answers to check to see if you like that. So good luck with that and thank you for coming on the course. So here we are, we have module 15, 10 multiple choice questions based on the HACCP Intermediate course, of which there were 14 lectures. So what I wanted to do is look at each slide and decide what you think is the right answer. If you're not sure of the answer, if you want to drop me an email, or even just message me on YouTube and I can give you the correct answer. Let's see what I can do with these. Okay, question one. The definition of HACCP is a system which identifies, evaluates and controls what? Is it A. Hazards which are significant for food safety B. Hazards which are significant for food quality C. Hazards which are significant for food safety and food quality D. All hazards So which one do you think? Again you can pause and, and decide Next question Number two, a deviation is a failure to meet what? Is it A, a critical limit? B, a customer specification? C, a target level or value? D, a legal requirement? Number three, which one of the following would not be included in the prerequisite programs? Integrated pest management, A, effective cleaning and disinfection, B, Microbiological monitoring, C or D, approved reputable suppliers. Number four, during an audit, you identified fruit flies near the fruit storage areas. The best prerequisites to audit to establish a cause would be what? Is it A, cleaning and stock control? B, pest control and contamination risks? C, personal hygiene and stock control? Or D, cleaning and recording systems. Number five, which of the following will control multiplication hazards in chillers most effectively? Is it A, storing high risk and raw food separately? B, storing all low risk and cooked food separately? C, keeping temperatures below five degrees C? D, cleaning and disinfecting monthly? As I said earlier, if I want to pause it and decide on the answer, I could welcome to do that. Let's go into the next one, which is number six. What is the difference between a critical limit and a target level or value? Is it known as A. Tolerance, B. Deviation, C. Schedule, or D. Specification? Number seven. <coughs> Excuse me, which of these would be a suitable control? to prevent harmful levels of low temperature pathogens building up during storage of cooked meat. Is it A, checking the chiller temperature is below five degrees C, B, storing cooked meat in a separate chiller to raw products, C, ensuring adequate stock rotation measures are in place, or D, disposing of the meat if it starts to spoil. Number eight. Question 2 of the Codex Decision Tree asks, is the step specifically designed to eliminate the likely occurrence of a hazard or reduce it to an acceptable level? To which of the following steps would your answer be yes? A. Storage of vegetables in a fridge. B. Frozen delivery of raw goods. C. Mixing in a clean vessel. D passing finished products through a metal detector. Number nine, which of the following is true about critical limits? A, they should be determined by using the codex decision tree. B, they must be determined for every control point in the hazard analysis. C, 
They separate the acceptable from the unacceptable, or D, they monitor the effectiveness of corrective actions. And lastly, number 10, which of the following are all monitoring activities? A, discarded food, auditing and observation of personal hygiene. B, checking temperatures, measuring pH and observation of personal hygiene. C, checking temperatures, discarded food and auditing. Or D, checking date codes, measuring pH and rejecting supplies. So that's the last of the questions. So good luck with those. As I say, if you're not sure about an answer to any of those, just drop me an email or message me on YouTube and I'll send you along the answer. So thank you for joining me with the course and good luck for the future.